and welcome to this 200th edition of Counter Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili and thank you for joining us. We start the show this week with a big economic development accomplishment. The county has signed a partnership agreement with the National Institute Standards and Technology to operate the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. The nation's hub of civil cybersecurity will be right here in Montgomery County. I am delighted to be here on behalf of our one million residents of Montgomery County to welcome and to congratulate all of us for this partnership and the work that we've done thus far, for what I know will be continued work for job security for the future. It is a wonderful day to find this agreement and to acknowledge the presence of so many in this room who have helped make this possible. Montgomery County is delighted to be the home of the National Center for cybersecurity. Montgomery County will be the epicenter of the nation's cybersecurity. Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley and Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett signed a partnership agreement for the development of the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. With the signing today uh, with County Executive Ike Leggett, who's always on the cutting edge of new emerging industries and sectors, I think few counties in our nation are as dynamic as Montgomery County's is uh, in terms of its economy and uh, diversity and the level of the skills level of, of her people and also the Dr. facility will be located on a 65,000 square foot building on Seneca Highway in Rockville on, on the county's biotech uh, corridor. Uh, it's really all about creating jobs and making safer those virtual spaces that all of us depend upon for our banking, for our electric grid, uh, for our internet and for our uh, personal information, a uh, permanent home for the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence in Montgomery County's Innovation Corridor will create jobs and spur innovation for uh, many, many decades to come. Through the National Cybersecurity Excellence Partnership, 16 companies, including Cisco Systems and Microsoft, have agreed to provide hardware, software, and expertise to the center's efforts to advance the rapid adoption of secure technologies. We join together as federal, state, and private sector partners on making sure that for the United States of America, we have a safer country, we have a stronger economy, and we have job opportunities for our young people. And by harnessing the resources of the federal government, working at the state and local level in Montgomery County, we hope to be able to accomplish all three. I'm happy to be here today to announce that the federal government has put another $15 million in fiscal 14 for the functioning of the National Center for Excellence, a tech transfer center that will be is located in Montgomery County. For several weeks, the County Council has been debating the future of development in the 10 Mile Creek watershed in Clarksburg. And as Susan Kennedy reports, a major decision has been made on the retail project that could be an economic boom for the community. By late next year, this site located off I-270 could be bustling with retail. In an 8-0 vote, the County Council voted to approve plans to construct the county's first fashion outlet center. Clarksburg Premium Outlets at Cabin Branch will encompass 484,000 square feet of retail on land that was once earmarked for a new hospital. To be able to provide this quality of retail for our community and for the region, it will be a regional draw. It, it belongs there right next to 270 where it's visible and so people are pretty excited about what it will mean for that part of our community and for everybody. The Cabin Branch project will bring badly needed restaurants and retail to Clarksburg without jeopardizing the town center. There are no plans for a supermarket, and developers agreed to a clause that prevents big box retailers from setting up shop. Also approved, measures that address the imperviousness associated with three major projects under consideration within the 10 Mile Creek watershed. In the end, the council approved a 15% impervious cap for the Egan and Miles Coppola properties and a 6% cap for the Pulte Homes plan, scaling back the original scope of each project by several hundred units. 
I think that the planning board uh, did a great job at recognizing that. Planning board staff draft uh, also uh, did a great job of recognizing that. And so I think that for us here on the council, we've got to use that same guidance that they had uh, to be able to make sure that we're delivering on everything that's necessary for Clarksburg. At this point, we're really uh, trying to figure out what's the best way to ensure that Ten Mile Creek is protected in the best way possible, while also recognizing that we have a commitment to the Clarksburg community as it builds up. In Clarksburg, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Does Silver Spring need a Central Park? Well, County Council Member Hans Rimmer thinks so and has a plan to bring more green space to the downtown area. My MC Media's Valerie Bonk has more. He calls it a Central Park, something he says is missing from the buzz of the downtown it area. There. It's like they forgot to put a park in, the, in downtown Silver Spring. So well, he's proposing a space picture, slated for a hotel in one of the busiest county, areas in downtown Silver that, Spring you know, be turned really instead into a green space for community use. Vote. There's a parcel next to the uh, transit center that is scheduled for future development, and um, I'd like to find out if there's a way we could convert that into a community use. Uh, that would be a central park here in downtown Silver Spring, and we need a central park in downtown Silver Spring. While the location and the title of a central park piqued the board's curiosity, the size of the space sparked some questions. It's not big, right? It's not like what we would want if we were starting from scratch and looking at all of downtown Silver Spring and saying, you know, where would you put a park and how big would it be? You know, I think you'd come up with a different answer, but it's what we got. Yeah, right, 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 it's the right. only piece of ground that I can see. The idea of more green space is something the board is working towards. Still, some members are unsure that this project is the answer. It's available, it's green, but it isn't necessarily going to work as a, as a community gathering space in my humble opinion, only because where it's located, it's an incredibly hilly site, and it's not a friendly intersection. In some ways, I'm a little bit hesitant to get too enthusiastic about that location in particular because there's so much transportation, activity. It seems like it's not a very restful, peaceful place. Council member Reamer has asked the Park and Planning Department to assess the feasibility of purchasing the land and is looking into putting money for the project into the county budget. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. The Montgomery County Council will hold its next town hall meeting on February 26 in Clarksburg. The meeting will take place at Rocky Hill Middle School beginning at 8 p.m. and residents are encouraged to ask questions on any issue. The development of Clarksburg, 10 Mile Creek, along with public safety and transportation needs are a few of the hot topics expected to be discussed. If you can't make the town hall meeting, you can watch the rebroadcast of it on County Cable Montgomery. When we come back, prominent Latinos meet to activate civic engagement within that community. And those video cameras on school buses have already caught several motorists violating the stop signs and citations have been issued. We'll be right back. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics, such as clamshells, Nelly containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. Woohoo! We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to this 200th edition of County Report This Week. I'm Laura Vergelli. A leadership summit was held in Montgomery County where the focus was on engaging the growing Latino community. My MC Media's Valerie Bonk reports. Valerie? 
The response was overwhelming for the first Latino Leadership Conference at Montgomery Community Media in Rockville, where local leaders came together to share their thoughts on issues close to the growing Latino community in Montgomery County. More than half of Maryland's Latino population lives in Montgomery County, and local leaders say they're working to ensure that their voices are being heard. It's a community that's grown exponentially, uh, and uh, we haven't really seen the same exact um, equivalency when it comes to civic participation. During a panel on civic engagement, she said that it's important, considering the Latino community is now the largest foreign-born community in Montgomery County, and the greatest number of kids coming into kindergarten in county schools are Latinos. It's a community that's very uh, loyal and very, you know, hardworking. It's made amazing contributions to this county, and so it's always important to have opportunities to just highlight that. Our end goal is really to have more Hispanic students um, graduate from college. Currently we have 13 percent of Hispanics that hold the bachelor's degree and, and it takes all of us, it's a shared responsibility for our communities, for the federal government, for local leaders to come together to help address this issue. Immigration is personal to Fox News analyst Juan Williams. I was born in Panama, uh, grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Watching how we assimilated into American life, how we became an American family. Uh, for me is very much part of my life story. And for those in attendance, the conference was an opportunity to learn. What I learned is that, you know, Latinos cannot be, you know, lumped together. It's something, you know, that I have felt inside, I felt in myself, but it was something that maybe was not really expressed explicitly. We sometimes take, uh, in Montgomery County and other places around the country, our diversity for granted. I'm here today to basically lend my support and voice to this outreach effort and to learn more be better informed so that I can better serve our overall community, especially our Latino and Hispanic community. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. Youth under the age of 18 will soon be able to obtain the new Youth Cruiser Smart Trip card. Starting on March 1st, the card will be available and will replace the paper monthly pass that provided unlimited rides on ride on buses at a cost of $11 per month. The pass provides significant savings on fares and can be obtained by visiting SmartTrip.com or some local giant and CVS stores. Youth will have to show proof of age and county residency. Also, riders aged 18 and under can continue to take advantage of Ride-On's Kids Ride Free program on weekdays from 2 to 7 p.m. Transportation investments make up an important part of County Executive I. Leggett's recommended capital budget. Tom Polk tells us more in this transportation update. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. County Executive Leggett unveiled his six-year capital budget that prioritizes significant investments in school construction, transportation, and job creation. For transportation, the budget supports construction of five bikeways, including the Needwood and Frederick Roads bike paths, and seven road projects, including Montrose Parkway East. Anticipating that the state and federal government will fund the Purple Line to provide light rail service from College Park to Bethesda, the budget includes $144 million for the Bethesda Metro South entrance and the Capitol Crescent and Silver Spring Green Trails. With the Council's recent approval of the Transit Corridor's Master Plan, the budget includes $10 million to initiate design of rapid transit along Maryland 355 and U.S. 29 corridors. Finally, the Executive's budget includes $154 million to maintain roads, including a 50% increase for residential road resurfacing. To view the complete capital budget submission, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. We're working to keep you moving. Fire Chief Steve Lohr was officially sworn in as the county's chief for the Fire and Rescue Services Department. Lohr had been serving as interim chief for the past several months. County Council recently confirmed his appointment and he has taken the oath of office. Recently, Council President Craig Rice met with the media and the issue he wanted to talk about was school bus cameras. That's because Rice is deeply concerned about the number of citations issued to motorists caught on camera passing stopped school buses this year. You may remember in January, police equipped several school buses with automated cameras to record vehicles that pass stopped school buses 
with activated flashing red lights. According to Rice, police issued 10 citations during the first month the cameras were in action. And to still see that many incidents in just the limited number of cameras that we have is extremely concerning. That means that either people still aren't educated about uh, the dangers that are out there or about the law uh, or that they don't care. And either way, we've really got to get a handle on this and make sure that people understand how much of a danger this is. In the coming weeks, the police plan to expand the program to include even more cameras on school buses. When we come back, we take you to a cyber club at Montgomery College. And MCPS celebrates its annual Bocce Championships. We'll be right back. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to this 200th edition of County Report this week. I'm Lorna Vigili. Montgomery College CyberWatch Club helps students to build on their classroom skills and prepare them for important competitions that can lead to internships and jobs. Danielle Stesky has a story. Chris Williams is a known traditional student at Montgomery College with some prior background in IT. In the fall of 2012, he founded the CyberWatch Club on the Germantown campus and since then has been its president. I really looked to this club in, um, in terms of being able to build upon the practical um, knowledge that you, you have in the classroom, the fundamental knowledge of certain systems and how everything works, uh, but you don't really get a chance to build it and work on it hands-on. And so this was supposed to be an extension of the classroom in many ways. The students meet every Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. Chris or another student will lead the group in a demonstration or exercise in which everyone can practice. While here, these students also build their skills to participate in a variety of competitions. We practice in various scenarios that imitate the competitions that we're likely to, to compete in. And in preparation for these competitions, we build on the, the skills that we learn in the classroom. Dr. C.K. Chang is the faculty advisor for the club. He's really kind of guided our focus. We would be all over the place and trying to learn things that may not necessarily contribute to success in one of these competitions. Chris is most proud of two awards in digital forensics hosted by the Department of Defense. It really is gratifying gaining this experience that really translate to, to either jobs or uh, internships because these are, are our skills that you're gaining in practicing for these, these competitions. According to Dean Kathy McCallion, the cybersecurity program is growing at the college and the awards won by students and faculty are bringing prestige to the institution. They're really ambassadors for us out in the larger community too, helping us attract students and people to this program that is designed to put people in, in the workplace to support our local industry. Any student is welcome to participate in the Cyber Watch Club. For more information, visit the website. For County Report This Week in Germantown, I'm Danielle Stesky. Montgomery County Public Schools recently held the Unified Bocce Championship, but unlike other sports competitions, it appears that most participants and spectators left this event feeling like winners. MCPS TV has a story. Welcome to the 2014 Montgomery County Bocce Championships. Bocce ball teams from across Montgomery County Public Schools participated in the countywide Bocce Ball Championship at Pay Branch High School. 
bocce teams include special education and regular education students and are part of the county's growing corollary sports program. This is a product of a lot of people's efforts uh, in athletics and non-athletics, putting these uh, the corollary teams together. We've provided a lot of opportunities for students with and without disabilities to be full-fledged varsity interscholastic athletes and all that goes with that. I can't describe how rewarding it is. I coached boys basketball for 12 years in the county. I've coached golf. I've coached baseball. I get as much enjoyment and competition out of this as any other sport I've coached and the kids just give you so much back. Um, it's just it's such a great experience. Most of the students who joined the bocce team had little to no experience with bocce and for many this was their first time playing a school-based team sport. The team from Bethesda Chevy Chase High School won the tournament, but the day was a victory for everyone involved. I am honored, so like it's unbelievable. This is the first team I've ever been a part of, so I absolutely love it. At first, I thought of it as something to do because I was not very active in in middle school, and I wanted to become more active. Parents also came out to show their support. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. I was supposed to work today, so I was able to get off to be here. I try to make it to the games to see all the kids compete and to see them work as a team. And they really rely on each other and know each other's strengths, and that, I think that's fantastic. MCPS offers three varsity interscholastic corollary sports. The goal? To provide interscholastic athletics opportunities for all students. Our schools, uh, our athletic directors, administrators and everybody, coaches involved uh, with these corollary sports teams, I think have done a tremendous job. I think we have provided a lot of opportunities for students who otherwise did not have real opportunities to participate. Seniors at a retirement community in Silver Springs stitch their own stories together for Black History Month, holding their first quilt show to educate the community. Here's the story from My NC Media. These seniors have been piecing a patchwork project together for months in order to pay tribute to Black History Month. And so if the quilt was hanging out on the line or on the porch or on a chair someplace, the runaway slave knew that it was an area that was safe and so they could go to that area. We um, knew that we had quilts with African American themes on them. And we assumed that there were other people who had quilts, you know, in their history or grandparents made or something like that. And we decided to see what was out there. The African American History Club and the Quilt Club at the Riderwood Retirement Community in Silver Spring came together to present their first African American quilt show, featuring more than a dozen quilts from many different aspects of history. The quilts are either, you know, African American themed, so there's some underground railroad symbolism on some of the quilts or that the fabric is African uh, fabric that was used. So that was the theme of, of entry into the show today. And so I think this is just a great time to celebrate, you know, that work. Some of the quilts are history themselves, passed down from generation to generation, while others like this one depicting President Obama's second term win were made by residents right here in Silver Spring. Oh, it's very important for us to look back and see the history. It, it's interesting, uh, one of the um, quilters had two quilts that were made of feed sacks. And so, so many people didn't know about feed sacks, but so many other people really remember feed sacks. So there's a lot of remembering going on. And for those looking for a way to learn and give back, it was a chance to write their own history. I've always been interested in, in our history, and so this was a nice way for me to participate. Is the she calls this one the Underground Railroad, and over there we called it Jacob's Ladder. So the names vary. For County Report this week, I'm Valerie Vaughn. When we come back, we take you to the Germantown Swim Center. And the impact of our changing weather on gardens will be discussed at an upcoming conference. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A team of five Montgomery College Construction Management students has taken first place in the National Association of Home Builders Construction Competition. Using a basic home floor plan, the team created drawings, estimates, and a construction schedule to take home top honors. 
and two student teams from MC's architecture program tied for second place in the Maryland Sustainable Growth Challenge. These students identified and solved community land use issues for Burtonsville, Maryland. Make plans to check out one of the many beautiful and provocative art exhibits now showing on all three MC campuses. From photography to woodcut prints to graphic design, there's something on display at MC for every art enthusiast. Check out the arts calendar for descriptions and locations. Welcome back to this 200th edition of County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. The Germantown Indoor Swim Center was the site for the 2014 Washington Metropolitan Interscholastic Swimming and Diving Championships earlier this month. My NC Media's Sonia Burke reports. Sonia? There's no question that swimming is big in Montgomery County. In fact, this is the 50th year that Montgomery County has hosted Metros, the Swimming and Diving High School Championships. And the swimmer that everyone's talking about tonight is Katie Ledecky. The Germantown Indoor Swim Center was packed with hundreds of swimming diving fans on deck for this high school meet. We have people who were team captains of their teams when they won the Metros and now their kids are swimming and team captains. So it's a kind of a huge family affair for this area. Everyone um, pulls for each other. We're so proud of, of Katie, but we're proud of all of our swimmers. And the swimmers did not disappoint. There were several Metro records set at the meet, including a new American record in the 500 free. Yeah, I've sort of had my eye on breaking 430 for a while now. Um, I think when I went 435 a couple years ago, that's sort of when I started thinking about creeping under 430. So it's been a lot of hard work since then and um, finally got under 430, so I'm very pleased. It's amazing when you see somebody do something no one's ever done before. And his star swimmer said she appreciates the support of this hometown crowd. I'm very pleased with, with how everything went. Um, getting the American record uh, was, was a great start to the weekend. And I had a lot of fun with my team and uh, it was just a great meet all around. It's great to be here at a, at a fast meet like this. It's really loud and exciting here. And it's, it's a great atmosphere to compete in. The excitement follows Katie even when she's out of the pool, signing autographs and posing for photos with her fans. It's really nice to have all their support and um, I, was, I was in their place 10 years ago so I know what it's like and um, it's definitely what inspired me to continue swimming, uh, getting autographs from Olympians when I was younger so uh, just if I can get back to the sport in any way like that, it's, it's a good thing. For County Report this week, I'm Sonia Burke. For this week's Brookside Gardens Clips and Tips, we wanted to let you know about an event happening at the end of February. Brookside will hold its annual Green Matters Symposium on Friday, February 28th from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. This year's topic is about how our weather is changing and what a gardener can do in a shift in climate. This event will be held at the Manor Country Club in Rockville. For more information or to register, go to brooksidegardens.org. It's time to go to the Humane Society where Kathy Stanhope joined us with our Pet of the Week. Kathy? This is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And today we are here with Layla. Layla came in as a stray, so we don't know too much about her except that she's wonderful with people. She is not particularly good with other dogs. So if you already have a dog and you're looking for a second, Layla is not the pet for you. But if you're looking for just one very loyal, very friendly, very loving and affectionate girl, come down and see Layla at the shelter. Give us a call at 240-773-5960 or visit Layla and all of the rest of the animals here at mchumane.org. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Now we leave you with shots of Rockville's 153-acre Civic Center Park, which includes the city's crown jewel, the historic Glenview Mansion. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.